This is a story about California. California is all about water, water that flows through one of the most productive agricultural valleys on earth. This is a story about fish, water, and people. You know, it is the breadbasket for a lot of America. You name it, almonds, pistachios, walnuts, all the processing tomatoes come out of California. All of that comes out of the Central Valley. And all of it is possible because, you know, over the last hundred years, we've really conquered the landscape. When we got here, it was a disaster. You know, it's basically a floodplain not good for farming. So the first thing we had to do was to harness the river and basically keep it out of the floodplain. So we built the levees. Then we had a floodplain that still, when it rained, it wouldn't drain. So we set up the drainage system. Then we brought back in the irrigation. And now, you know, 100 years later, we've effectively conquered the landscape. And the discussion at this point is, how do we put nature back into the mix? How do we get it back in and integrate it with farming where it makes sense. Before, no one, you know, there wasn't really much of a discussion about fish, there wasn't a lot of discussion about birds. Now we're having those discussions. And the discussions tend to lead to fish or farms. And we're saying, why not fish and farms? Most people, when they drive up and down the Central Valley, they, they see orchards, they see vineyards, they see fields. And they don't think about this place as this remarkable valley that received the floodwaters off of the Sierra Nevada every year, winter and springtime. And it's spread over an area 400 miles long by 30 miles wide. And this is what makes the Central Valley so extraordinary. The skies would literally darken with millions and millions of waterfowl. Its rivers had four races of salmon, and the wetlands of these floodplains were amazing with grizzly bear and antelope and elk and vast production of insects and birds. It was really an extraordinary place and green as green as could be and as far as the eye could see. When the Europeans came to the Central Valley around the time of the gold rush, they basically converted the Central Valley into an agricultural valley. And there were vast biological consequences to this disconnection between the river and the land through levees and dams. We lost 95% of the wetlands and floodplain forests, which were really the biological engines of productivity uh, in the Central Valley. And of course, we disconnected the places that salmon spawned. And of course, we disconnected all the places that salmon would rear. So these pipes right here, this is where Wallace Weir is gonna go in. That's the the future site of the first water control structure. This is the trade-off we made. Wildlife abundance replaced by agricultural abundance. But what if it doesn't need to be that way? What if we can make room for wild salmon in an agricultural field? This is the story about wild salmon in a managed landscape.
In the Sacramento Valley, where we are, especially in the rice industry, we're trying to show that while we occupy the floodplain, we don't have to be the only thing going on out there. So what I think it comes down to is we grow food for people all summer long. Why can't we grow food for fish and birds in the off season, in the winter? This is a conservation story about wild salmon on rice fields. When most people think about conservation, they think about national parks. They think about taking the best of our remaining wild places and setting them apart from people, from human disturbance. Or they think restoration, taking those places that can be wild again and restoring them to some semblance of a pristine natural state. But the truth is, the majority of Earth's landscapes are affected by people, are managed by people. Agriculture is the biggest part of that human footprint. A full 40% of the Earth's surface is either in row crops or pasture. These are the places which feed the human populace. Places like the Central Valley. We must learn to integrate a knowledge of nature and natural process into our working agricultural landscapes. The story of conservation is the story of agriculture. If we can't increase the benefit to wild species from our working agricultural landscapes, then a majority of the species on Earth are destined for extinction. So, we know the Central Valley used to be an enormous floodplain. Before European settlement, winter storms and spring snowmelt would swell the river channels and spill out onto the floodplains. The floodwaters would turn the Central Valley into a vast network of wetland habitats and one of the greatest wildlife landscapes on Earth. The floodplains acted as a giant solar collector where plants and algae turned sunlight and carbon from the air into sugar, which was then eaten by bugs, creating a huge abundance of insect life. That food energy is only made available to fish when floodwaters spread out and slow down across the floodplains. Born upstream in headwater spawning areas, Juvenile salmon on their way to the ocean would be swept down with the floodwaters and out onto the floodplains. Here, they grew fat and healthy on the prolific bug population. This process ensured the survival of the largest and most diverse run of Chinook salmon on Earth. Today, levees cut off more than 95% of Central Valley rivers from their floodplains. This greatly diminishes the energy that flows into the river aquatic food web. Essentially, Levees are starving the Central Valley salmon populations. At Nags Ranch, we're mimicking natural processes in order to restore ecological function. Flooding agricultural fields in the winter provides juvenile salmon the access to the productive habitat and the bug buffet that allows them to grow big and strong and increases their chances of returning as adults. As the largest floodplain still connected to the Sacramento River, Yolo Bypass is also the best habitat for native fish in the entire valley, but only when it's flooded. Salmon need floodplain habitat every year. Yola Bypass only floods during large flood events every couple of years. And to add insult to injury, it's designed to drain as rapidly as possible. My name's Jacob Katz and I grow floodplain fatties. As senior scientist with Caltrout, I lead our Nagiri project where we're using a scientific approach to show that agricultural fields can mimic lost salmon rearing habitats. In year one, we started in the corner of a flooded rice field, a mud puddle about chin deep. The question was, could that water provide what fish needed? And the results, were tremendous. Not only did those fish survive, but they thrived. In years two and three, we built a 20-acre complex of replicated salmon fields, a laboratory out on the floodplain. We added water and salmon fry. We waited six weeks, and voila, they grew phenomenally fast, much faster than in the river. Now we're putting that science into action. Our proof of concept Nagiri project has shown that with relatively slight investment in water infrastructure, we can allow wild fish to enter these managed landscapes and thrive. Projects on Yolo and Sutter bypasses represent the best opportunities. 
We're partnering with farmers to keep those floodwaters out on the floodplain. By mimicking the natural long duration flood events, we can restore ecological function on a working agricultural landscape and bring back self-sustaining populations of salmon, smelt, and other native fishes to the Sacramento Valley. What started as a mud puddle experiment in the corner of a rice field is now shaping water management over tens of thousands of acres of the Central Valley. This is how we achieve fish abundance on a managed landscape. These are management solutions for fish, water, and people.